So you also started uh, songwriting at Berkeley. Can you mm -hmm. tell us about your first efforts or the, the, the teaching that, that helped you with songwriting? So basically, with, I remember when I was taking the first songwriting course, it wasn't like my teacher had me write the whole song in one go. It was more of lyrical exercises. For example, from week to week, for the first four or five weeks, he would have me write a verse or half of the verse and develop that into a short snippet of songs. And I would just work from there. So it was pretty gradual, but what I started with, I was concentrating on writing the lyrics a lot, just really getting into the rhyme schemes and seeing which, which are the things that would work or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So can, can you talk a bit, can you talk through how you start writing a song? So if, if, if I ask you to start writing a song now, what, where do you begin? It's a hard question because a lot of times it depends because there'd be times that my lyrics would, the lyrics would come to my head first or the melody would come to my head first. And to reiterate what I was saying earlier about the fact that it depends with the first songwriting class that I took. I did it both ways, as in my teacher would be giving one of those exercises that, okay, you might want to start with melody first and then develop that into melody with lyrics, or it could be other way around. So, um, I had it both ways and up until today I'm still not able to determine which process I resonate more it all comes down to each song that if I were to start writing it's just it's it's always been uncertain mm -hmm. And do you have a subject in mind uh, when you start a song? Um, are you referring specifically to Cry? Uh, I, I was thinking of Cry because that's the only song I have heard. But, uh, but just in general, uh, do you, uh, yeah, do you have a topic in mind when you start or does that come later or? They do come later. They do come later. Okay. Usually at the start of my songwriting process, I would always try to keep the, the concept, the, the overall concept open. But as I go along, I would be picking out the ones that is resonating with me the most at that moment. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And um, so how did you try to start your career after you graduated? After I graduated, I was moving from Boston to New York and I was attending a lot of open mics, but also at the same time, I was also looking for other jobs like teaching music or doing the music licensing and just really going with that um, conventional path in terms of finding a career because I was granted a temporary work permit that mm -hmm. automatically comes with graduation. So I literally had a year and in which the first three or four months I spent on looking for conventional jobs and 
to no avail because I didn't have a lot of experience in teaching. I was studying vocal performance. So I felt lost that the blueprint that I acquired from college apparently were unusable when it came to real life. Mm -hmm. It felt really alienated, but despite all that, I was still attending a lot of open mics and there weren't much of them that were resonating with me at a time. And towards the end of the year, I was introduced to this New York based Thai rapper, his name's Nate. He was working at this sake bar that was pretty close to my place. And I remember showing up there um, a lot, most of the times after those open mics that would finish late at night, like one, and then since the bar closes at three, then I would be stopping by for the last two or three drinks before I head back to my place. Mm -hmm. And that was how I met Nate. And weeks after weeks, we kind of started just really getting to know each other. And he had this project that we wanted help on in terms of some vocals. And as we were getting to know each other, he then realized that I sing. So mm -hmm. I jumped on one of his tracks and helped him record the chorus, came up with the part. And what came afterwards was that he just went, oh, I have this friend that I'd like you to meet maybe y'all could resonate with one another and he's in the call right now with us to um i'm talking about tony mm -hmm. so that was how i i met tony it was through nate back then when i was doing a lot of open mics i was feeling lost and i didn't know where to go and after helping him record a bunch of parts then he went oh yeah like you two should meet mm -hmm. and so we were linked up with one another i went to his place short after the mention i think it was two or three weeks after the mention mm -hmm. right so this is 2018 or that was um towards the end of 2018 going into 2019 mm -hmm. we started working at the beginning of 2019 as in me and tony great and so do you meet any musicians that you uh during that year that you're in new york um that that you not so much back in 2018 with 2018, the important milestone would be the fact that Nate introduced me to Tony mm -hmm. and we didn't really start anything solid right away. But then I went back to Thailand for New Year and then I came back towards the end of January and that was when we started um, writing one of our songs together. Great. And do you want to talk about uh, how, how you started writing together? And, and Tony, feel free to jump in. Sure. <laughs> uh, Patty, Patty can go ahead. So, well, I, I guess I can introduce a little bit. Um, so we met uh, and, then, um, and then I just really like his vocals. You know, it's just, uh, especially like the stereotype of like Asian, Asian person sing R&B, you know, there's not many that in America that does it. And then his vocals were really solid and it resonates kind of like what I uh, was doing. And I think simil we have similarities where I'm also classically trained 
and I feel that you know a lot of times we're constrained in that classical when it's in classical and then we can't really uh, express ourselves um so i I like to you know work with like singers and artists who are a little more free because overall we're you know we're making music we're listening to music and it's supposed to be enjoyable not supposed to be something painful you know to develop the skill to become better that that's like a sort of like a hard journey but at the end of the day you know it's it's just music so i i really like pat's um talent so that's how we started working together and then uh originally i had a song i was making for another uh it was like a client potential client and then the the client couldn't really sing it so uh when we first met uh, i told pat oh i i have this song uh why don't you try it and then he came out with a uh, really good melodies and uh lyrics so that's how we started like recording and then uh getting better and then uh working uh with uh more songs mm -hmm. right yep uh, Patra, do you have something to add? Uh, how 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 did these meetings go? Like, uh, can you describe one of these meetings? So at the very first meeting, it was more. I was so I came to Tony's place together with Nate for the first time, and on that in that session, it was more listening to um, a bunch of tracks that Tony was trying to produce for Nate and I really liked the beat. However, towards the end of that meeting, I was still not sure what to make out of it. But like Tony said, he gave the beat that he had that he produced for another client and they weren't able to sing it, so I took it away with me and came back with it a, late, a week later with a couple of ideas, and mm -hmm. I wasn't really expecting much. I All I was thinking at that moment was, okay, I'm gonna do my best and shoot my best shot in terms of just inputting those ideas, but mm -hmm. it became something that he resonates with, so that was the start of us. Is this cry or is it a different song? It's a different it's a song. Different. Okay, uh, and so can can you tell us what ideas you were you, you added, or um, as for that song or for YRC? Your call. Uh, let, let, let's let's start with that song and and maybe what is the name of that song? It's called Where Are You Tonight. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, that's gonna be released. We ha kind of have a release schedule, so uh, I can show you uh, the other ones. Um, so the first one we decided to release was uh, "Cry," and then we have another song, "Burning Slow," and then after that we we're going to release uh, "Where Are You Tonight." Uh, okay. So Pat, you can go ahead and talk about "Where Are You Tonight." Okay. Mm hmm. So basically, when I was writing Why Are You Tonight, I was basically thinking of the fact that we're, back then it was 2019, it was last year, but still, we can still feel the same effect as of today in 2020, the fact that there's deep fake, there's a lot of things that we can't really trust, even though we see it on the computer screen, or even when we see it on FaceTime, or even when we see it on online dating sites, as in their fake profiles, their fake footages, their fake, um, there's a lot of things going on in the world that when they seem real, they're actually fake. And where are you, for where are you tonight? I was writing from the standpoint of someone who's been duped by another person whom he met through an online dating because we all know there's a lot of catfishes out there and if you guys know the show from mtv called the catfish or something mm -hmm. i think it's one of those really really real issues that 
are unspoken. I don't know why, maybe people have been encountering that for more occasions than they could count or they just simply de um, simply don't want to talk about it. And I felt that I wanted to bring that to light and to write from the perspective of the duped person because it can be lonely, especially when you're in New York. And that was one of the things that I had in mind, imagining myself as someone who got catfished in New York mm -hmm. when you're surrounded by the concrete jungle, you're surrounded by city lights, but you feel alone. And then you met someone that he or she could potentially be in your life and contribute for good but it ended up being that that person's actually not real that person never existed and i think that it's the same as being slapped in the face with empty promises and i think that it really ties into other issues like ghosting or just people not following through with what they promised. And in this day and age, I think it's one of those important matters to really emphasize on because I don't want to quote Mike Tyson, but there are a lot of people out there that um, get too comfortable with the fact that social media enables people to respect um disrespect one another without being punched in the face for it mm -hmm. um i'm not gonna condone any act of physical harms it's not my thing it's it's a bad thing but what i'm saying is that when people don't get consequences for disrespecting one another it makes it easier for people to fall short on one another. And I don't think it's good in terms of, we're all connected to the technology, but mentally we've become more disconnected from one another. And that's what I'm trying to communicate through Where Are You Tonight. Mm -hmm. So Tony, what did you think when that idea was brought to you? He's obviously like, you know, a bit, like, oh, Tony just froze. I can 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 you see me? How about now? Uh, that's that's good. Hello. Uh, yeah, you're back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's he's kind of in a little bit different generation, and for me, I don't use online dating apps a lot. Uh, I don't really use it at all. So to me, uh. A little something, I guess, new, and I felt like it's you know kind of kind of fresh because no one really talks about uh, that kind of concept. Um, and overall, I just kind of like the flow of the vocals and then how everything just kind of like touch upon each other. And I feel like you know you'll resonate well with people uh, with with people today, uh, where they use a lot of apps to meet people. Um, the Bumble and the experience. And yeah, so, uh, and then, so my, my whole idea, I guess, as a producer uh, was, you know, I want to be able to kind of use analog synths and also have some general elements um, in, in the song. So it's kind of, it, you know, it's not traditionally R&B. It's, you know, you have like the, the drum, the live drums, the, the guitar, uh, uh, but very few use kind of like the, the analog sense. So it's kind of a little bit retro feeling, but then also new age. So that was kind of my idea. And just com combining, uh, I guess, I mean, the concept of like, you know, being duped, uh, it's nothing new, but, you know, it's, I guess it's just in the modern age, it's, uh, it's just things are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 